What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Railroads Online, joined once again by Heist. Hello, Heist, how's it going? How are you Dude, doing? Dude, it's going awesome. We got we, two trains here today. Yeah, I'm we excited. bought some cars. Uh, and these cars are actually labeled with the, uh, you know, Central, Rio, and Pacific, and uh, the car numbering schemes, which Heist was explaining the numbering schemes before, why they're all called 200-something, and then a number, like 201, 202, etc., um, yeah, the, the first couple numbers are just like the class designation, and then the, the last numbers are sequential. So you'd start with the 200, then you go to 201, 202, 203, whatever. They're the 200 series of cars. And right. that way you know if you have a 200, it's a stake flat. Yeah, and then for us, since we are we don't really know what to call these numbers, we're just numbering them based on the order they appear in the buy menu. So this is car 1, car 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Exactly. Um, so that's how we're going for it. Anyway, uh, we're going to run some trains today. We need to make more money. I guess I should join your company. I uh, suppose so. Because... I'm the boss. Yeah, you're you're the guy with all the money. I'm still not employed by you, so I'll just wait a <laughs> bit. It's fine. Uh, we'll, which we'll train? We're obviously... We're point. both each going to run each train once. The log train and the beams back to the freight depot. Uh, do you have any preference on which one you want to run first? Um, I don't. Okay, well, take your pick, sir. Well, I'm in the Montezuma already, so... All right, well, that's... Okay, fine, then. I'm, I'm be... highballing. I'm highballing through the yard. I'll, I'll see you at the see you at the sawmill, maybe. Okay, well, uh... Per perhaps. Yeah. I don't know what direction the sawmill... I guess you have to go first, anyway, because you got to go straight through, and i got to stop at the yeah. sawmill. Yeah, I don't know I what direction the switches through. are all, all set at the sawmill, so <laughs> you might, you might want to check out... Yeah, b before I just run through with reckless abandon and just yeah. end up somewhere. Yeah. Dude, I love this. Look at this. We're, I'm gonna like pull onto a line right behind you. This is uh, not safe railroading practice, but it's fine. What do it's you mean? Uh, what are you talking about? As long as you've cleared the switch, right? It's fine. Yeah, it's, it's totally fine. There's definitely never been timetable rules about making at least 10 minutes between trains and stuff. No, I'm like 10 not. minutes ish. About 10 minutes ish if you like slow down the footage by I don't know a million thousand. A lot, percent. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I could probably, like, jump off my train and get onto the back of yours. Like, so, the, the funny thing for my POV right now is that you're far enough back that you've de-rendered, and so you're just, like, T-posed floating above the track, like, two <laughs> car lengths behind you. me. <laughs> it's just John Railroadson just floating through the air. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true, because the client doesn't, uh... Yo, what? Why are there a bunch of green trees here? What the heck? There's it, there's a mix of green and, and gold ones. It's very autumn feeling Wait, still. Yeah, but there's like one big patch of... Sorry, I got distracted. Like, I saw a squirrel you, you, on the side of the, you know. You, you briefly load it in. If I if I turn around and look at you, Betsy briefly loads in, but then it de-renders, and then there's just floating John Railroads in again, all over again. I realized, I too, bet, at, uh, at some point in time, we're going to have to actually set up some watering uh, towers and sand. Eventually, yeah. And, and Eventually we will use water, yeah. And fire depots and stuff, because, like, yeah. I, I really, like, Betsy, for some reason, still has a lot of water. Yeah, the, the water usage is really, really minimal on these, which is completely antithetical to how they really work. They use a ton of water in real life. Like, right. Even, even at the Railroad Museum, where we don't have that far to run, we have to get water at least once every day in the tender. Do you guys you know? have a so water even, tower there, or do you just actually we like, do with a hose? We or? have a we have a water tower. It holds ten thousand, or I think it's a twelve thousand gallon tank historically um, that they've remodeled it after, but it only holds ten thousand because it's got like a plastic liner on the inside for longevity purposes. Right. Um, okay. It looks like I'm lined through the run around track, so you'll just have to line the one switch to go into the uh, the sawmill loading. So it shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, we, we've got our water tower, and it fills with a well, and, and yeah, we use it every day we run steam, just about. We have to use it, so. That's awesome. All right, I'm just going to, let's see here. Uh, let's first switch, that's smelter line. That's turnaround line. I don't care about that. That's, well, I could go this way, or I could go, or I could go this way. I'll go this way. I'll go straight you've on. you got through. options, man. Dude, there's so many options here. It's great. So it's kind of good, you know, you're probably going to do a load at least of beams by the time that I get back. Right. But that's good because the pond's almost full and it would be a waste to just dump more in because it can only hold 100. And I think they just disappear if you try to put more in. I think you still get paid, but it doesn't like go above 100. So you're going to get the beams going and then 
uh, it'll start consuming the logs, so then I'll replenish it by the time that I get loaded up and down there, because you're only getting three clicks per car, eight cars, and I have six clicks per car and eight cars, so I'm going to have twice the loading time as you. Oh, I didn't... Oh, my goodness. I screwed up. I screwed uh -oh. up so hard. I mean, I didn't What'd really... In the last episode, I have three switches that I use to line up the straight for where the loading is for the beams, like where I am. Oh, did you not I, throw them back? I No, I left them as three switches. I didn't... I came in on oh, the right side, so it didn't matter. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I would have... Like, I didn't derail or anything. But I, I was just imagining Betsy having clipped into a platform as she ran through a diverging leg of a switch. <laughs> no, that would have... Yeah, that would have sucked. No, it's... I just... I forgot to delete them and replace them with a straight piece of track, which is... A bit uh, silly. Easy fix. Yeah, easy, easy, fix. easy fix. Well, I just got to the logging camp, but I'm going to run through and run around first, so I'm going to run through the reverse loop, and then I'll load on the way out. I, I'm willing to bet you'll be pretty close to loaded by the time I start loading. Dude, I love that that loop at the logging camp. It's it is like, so pretty. It's so nice it's, to be able to just drive out and then load on your way out and then just leave down the hill with like barely yep. any tractive effort. You don't need a lot of pull to get going. You just kind of like start coasting down the hill, you know? Super easy operationally, and it's so pretty. It's just wandering through the trees. The trees nice and close to the right of way. I mean, it's literally like a little canyon of, of leaves and everything. It's really pretty. We need something with real air brakes because Montezuma, I mean, oh, she gets I, yeah, I'm not around gonna, by everything too, you know? Yeah, I'm not going to stop. There's not going to be any stopping involved in this. <laughs> in this dry, I can already tell. Like, I can already, like, I'm crawling forward just to move from, you know, cart to cart. And it, it there's no way stopping is going to happen in any sort of any timely way, manner. Any or form. <laughs> yeah. I always find that amazing with, with trains too, is it's like, even, like, Betsy can pull, like, what, 600,000 pounds or something on flat ground, but then as soon as you right. put, like, a half percent grade, it's like, eh, down to 60, and, you know, it's yeah, like... And then all of a sudden, nothing. And then, yeah, yeah and then out, nothing. We're, yeah. we're reliant on that big normal force to, to make the friction happen, right? Yeah. Because your, your frictional coefficient of steel wheel on steel rail is so low, and that's what makes it so efficient. But even when your locomotive's doing that, too, right? You can only get so much, so... Yeah, definitely gets interesting, but as soon as I mean a couple percent, like there's a reason that most they mainlines did, okay, so in the they United did, States do less than two percent. You know, trains so. use steel rails and steel wheels, but I feel like they do that more for the durability's sake than for efficiency's sake, right? Like, well, it's a, it's a little bit of both because I mean the friction is low, right? So that that also helps with everything trailing behind you, but certainly it is also for the, the weight and the ability to carry that extra weight. You know, it's not just one or the other, it's both of those pieces. Yeah, like if you did rubber on trains, you would need so many wheels just to support yeah, the weight exactly. of a car. And then on top and, and of that- And they wear out so fast. Yeah, like yeah. how fast do they wear out, right? Like you'd just be- Yeah. Well, there, there is actually, interestingly enough, somewhat of a <laughs> science behind the wheels and then the right hardness for the application where the wheels on the train cars are actually different compounds than the wheels on the tires of the locomotive. Well, that's interesting. And yes, I said tires. Steam locomotives have tires. They're steel tires, but they are tires nonetheless. They're actually separate from the wheel and they get, uh, they get sweat on there with a, a gas flamethrower, basically. That's a big ring of fire that heats up the tire. They beat the tire onto the wheel center with, uh, with a couple big sledges. And then that's how you put new tires on. But they're a specific compound based on the weight of the locomotive so that the locomotive has the right hardness of tire to have the right adhesion for how much power it can put down for its weight. I guess, so like at, at, a, at a very like low level, you'd actually like the steel would flex in the tire or is it way too hard for that? I mean, ev everything flexes a little bit, right? We're right, but I'm talking like a, at a visible, like like it would be less than a millimeter of flex, or would it be? Oh like... yeah, it just absolutely nothing. You wouldn't yeah, see okay. it. Yeah, okay. Um, but you know, they you do get that little bit of flexing going on, and right. actually, one of the most interesting and most common failures of wheels these days on locomotives is called shelling, where parts of the tread surface get ripped out. And what's actually happening is a slip dislocation of the crystalline grain structure of the steel. 
So when you're talking about how steel's actually made, it's like little groups of cubes, basically, of the little atoms. Yep. And occasionally, they it's, you know, the bonds is, can break is, and get moved. Isn't it face-centered cubic for steel, or is it base-centered cubic? One's like a 624 or whatever, and one's like, I remember all this. And then it's, titanium it's is strong because science. it's a hexagon, guys, okay? It's a hexagon yeah. with a triangle in it. Let's calm down. Right. <laughs> No, so it, it's, I'm pretty sure it's just the normal cube structure where you've got, you know, the, the points of the cube, the, the vertices, vertices of the cube as where your little atoms are in your steel structure with all the extra fun little things that get mixed in alongside. But the wheels will actually try so hard to apply the grip to the rail yeah, they'll that it'll cause it. slip dislocation where the bonds break and it moves the bond over one until it peels bits of wheel out. Um, and like there's been years and years and years of studies to try and figure out the exact right material to limit this sort of thing. And that's actually kind of why modern locomotives have been uh, determined like 44-ish hundred horsepower with six traction motors, six wheel sets is like the ideal thing. They tried more horsepower than that. They tried 6,000 and it didn't work. It just killed the wheels. Like 4,400 six wheel sets is like the ideal amount to actually make sure that you're able to put the power down. That's so interesting when you think about I mean, you know, it makes sense. It's the same with your car. If you have a car with too much power, it'll burn the tire rather than actually deliver traction. But like, it's just it's just fascinating when you scale it all up to the size of a train because then, you know, you end up with this all the ridiculous materials. Right. It's really easy to think that it's like, oh, it's a train and it's steel and, and it's hardcore because it's steel, but it... The amount yeah. of little nuanced science that goes into it where it's, no, it's this precise steel for a locomotive or even this precise steel for a steam engine, this one versus this one, compared to the wheel set itself behind, you know, totally different. Oh, yeah, different. and then if you get into, like, planes, it just gets even worse. <laughs> yeah, we, we grew these turbofan blades out of singular crystalline grain yeah. structures. And then we that spin them at, like, 20,000 RPM, and they stretch, and they, like, superheat <laughs> and stretch. And, oh, uh, yeah, oh, I remember that. It's ridiculous. Dude, yeah, playing the tech that goes into some of that stuff, like, anything, yeah. jet engines, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's some that's... serious insanity. Like, they teach you some of that stuff in school, and then you're like, Wait, no, they can actually manufacture that? Yeah, and they then you look at a turbofan, a turbofan prop, and it's got, like, air holes in it because they blow super-cooled air through the, the prop to, like, you know, cool them down so they don't explode. And it's like, I have no idea how you manufacture that stuff. It's a, And it's like it's like you said, from a single grain structure, so it's strong as heck, and, like, yeah, no, it's it's ridiculous. There's no chance for any dislocation because yeah. it's, it's all aligned to the grid. It's perfect material, quote-unquote. Yeah, you know? it's just, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm uh, on my way back no to the freight depot, by the way, with beams already. Are you really? <laughs> yeah. I'm almost loaded. I'm only going 50% reg, but this is flat ground, so Betsy's doing all right. There you go. Yeah, I'm loading the last two cars right now. So, <laughs> turns out, uh, e even while loading on the cranes, it, uh, it takes a little bit of nerding out about material science to pass the time. Yeah, I feel like I feel like <laughs> you're going to have to... I hated material science in school, by the way. I mean, it was cool. Like, you know, you get to smash a watermelon and like, freeze it in liquid nitrogen. And I put my hand in liquid nitrogen once, uh, and everyone's going to say it's uh, fake. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. And I'll tell you how you could do it. The, the prof actually asked. He's like, does anybody want to put their hand in liquid nitrogen? And everyone was kind of like, you know, no. a bunch of wimps. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, I'll do it, sure. And basically, if you put your hand in for, like, less than a second, like, it's a fraction of a second, like, you just dip it and pull it out, the heat from your hand releases air bubbles, so the nitrogen right close to your hand, the liquid, instantly vaporizes and becomes gas from the heat off your hand. And as long as you're fast enough so that the surface of your skin doesn't cool down enough, then the temperature difference, like, creates an air pocket of nitrogen around your hand. So you dip your hand in the liquid and you pull it out. Don't try this at home, kids. I swear to God, do not put your hand in liquid nitrogen. But you do it if you do it quick enough. It's a very weird feeling. It almost feels like your hand gets wet, but then you pull it out. And it's completely dry because it's nitrogen gas, right? That's all. Just instantly vaporizing. I I never got to see that experiment when I was in school. We didn't yeah. do that one. Yeah, it was. I don't know how my prof ever got away with doing that, but we were like freezing material, so we took like steel and we put steel in an oven, and then we would smash it with a giant pendulum and see what happened, right? How much force it took to break. Then we put steel in like liquid nitrogen at negative 196 Celsius, 
and again smash it with a giant hammer and see what would happen like how much force and then steal at room temperature and you know also and you're basically just plotting materials on a temperature curve right right but then he has his jar of liquid nitrogen and you know put your hand in liquid nitrogen it's, uh, i don't i don't know at the time it seems like a cool idea I, right. This sounds fun. It, it could potentially. I probably me. shouldn't have done it, but you know, I'm here and my hands are fine. I think so. Oh, there you go. The cool I thing think... too, if you pour liquid nitrogen on the floor, um, because it's so dense, it just rolls across the floor as like a cloud and picks up Weird. all the dirt with it. But then it moves everything to like the outside edge of the room. It's really quite neat. That is neat. Anyway, liquid nitrogen, I, fun stuff. I think my favorite thing for material science that I feel so spoiled with in, in my career was that I was volunteering for the Railroad Museum when I was going through college, and I ended up getting like an internship, basically, at the museum. Uh, and so we were, I was taking material science class, and they were talking about like annealing copper and what annealing copper does, making it softer and better at like being a gasket and stuff. And learning that one week in class, and then the next week... We're sealing up the steam dome of one of the steam engines, and it's got a copper gasket. And, you know, okay, well, we got to heat it with the torch till it gets rainbow colored. And then, you know, that will anneal the copper, and it'll make sure that it seals better. And then you zip it down, you know, with big, huge wrenches and a million bolts on the studs in the dome. Clamp the gasket down. Didn't leak on the first try, and it's like, okay. School said it one way, but seeing it in person... That's like one of the best things out there. So if you're interested in like material science or engineering or that sort of thing, get involved in some of these places where you can really get hands on and, and learn how to do that stuff. Whatever it is you're interested in, not just trains, automotive, whatever you want to do, you will learn so much more by getting to do it and see it with your own eyes than you ever can just in the book or hearing it from a professor. That stuff's really, really valuable. All right, I've, uh, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'll be at the sawmill probably before you. Have... Check the loading uh, thing. I you, I gave you a bunch of money. Lots of sort of lots of different thoughts coming down the telegram right now. Beep 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 beep. Yeah, we should yeah, learn Morse code. Seven hundred twenty-six dollars. We so. should learn Morse code and exclusively communicate Morse code when we're not directly next to each other. Beep 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 yeah. beep 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 beep. <laughs> Then you're like trying to good. edit it afterwards. You're like, oh no, wait, I missed that conversation. Hold that. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, what did he say? Yeah. He Go said up. beep boop. Okay, so I've unloaded three cars of logs, and that put us at 98 out of 100. Okay. So I guess I'm going to see, you know, what happens when I put the fourth car in. Yeah. So I'm going to pull ahead a little bit, and then I guess I'll have to determine whether or not I have to go to the freight depot. As long as you get the money from it, who cares, right? Yeah, exactly wasted logs man but that's okay. well there's unlimited logs though that is true it's just time it's just time right, so you know? i have 906 dollars before i unload okay and i'm unloading and it only unloaded wait it, I, I unloaded three but it only paid me for two, and now it's at 100 out of 100, and there's still three on this car, so it won't even let you unload when you get 100. Well, that's interesting. Okay. That's kind of cool. But it, but but it also means you can't make money off. Yep. That means that means I gotta go to the freight depot. So all right, I guess well, hold I'm on. Let me come ahead. back and load up again, and then. Um... Wait. So yeah. how many cars did you manage to unload? But oh, no, you'll be able to three unload as I load up more. Oh, I could do that. Yeah, well, let's do it. Let's do a train swap. I'll I'll uh, unload yours. You can start loading this one once I get back there. Okay. Train and, swap. I like and, it. And then we'll uh, I'll go Take back the to the Zumba. logging camp and load up the rest of the logs so we can just sell it all to the freight depot in one giant final push. Yeah. I think that's the, the nice move. I think the the bummer with doing the beams this way is that you're using less commodities, so you're cycling the pond less if we want the shorter trip. But I mean, it's the more uh, profit dense setup, right? So yeah, it makes more I sense, mean, it doesn't really matter. Might as well have both trains back at the thing anyway. I mean, what's the next? The next thing we need to buy realistically, other than engines, because engines are always great. The next thing we need to buy is, is hopper cars, right? Yeah. Hoppers or cordwood cars? I don't know if it makes a difference, but yeah. Well, we'll hopper cars because then we can deliver planks and beams to the iron mine. Well, we have to hook up to the iron mine first. Yeah, so smelt if we hook up to the smelter first, we could run cordwood to the smelter. Which needs cordwood yeah. cars. Then we need cordwood cars for that. But at the same time, we could also run to the iron mine first. 
and then move the commodities from the sawmill there. So right. it's, it's kind of either or, you know, they both work. Sounds like a decision for the comments to make. Yeah. What do you want to see us buy next, folks? Well, it's either, do we know. go to the iron mine first or do we go to the smelter first? That's really where it's at. Yeah, I guess that's the, the interesting challenge. The smelter is theoretically the easier run to lay. And then the iron ore mine, I mean, there's many ways to get there. And I've done uh, many stupid ways to get there. So it'd be interesting to see what we decide to do. Yeah, I don't know. But it's, I feel like I want to do like a nice... Um, I want to do something a little different. I'm thinking we do a run up the iron valley way low. And then do a bunch of those like arcing big bridges, you know? Oh, that'd be fun. If you go like, down, way up. down the floor from the smelter all the way. Yeah, then, from the yeah, way, all the oh, way from the floor of the smelter. So... And then, and then we've just got bridges. like a giant helix of bridges in the in the bowl. The yeah, bottom. absolutely. Yeah, that would be cool. Oh Why man, not? that would be lit. That would be super cool. Yeah, let's do that. I don't know hey, how look, it's going to all work, but oh, what's up? I think I'm on the right hey, line. I, I, you are. Sure. I, I checked your switches. And right, I'm here. out of the foul here, so you should be able to... Oh, I can just do this. Ah! There we go. All yours. And now I'm the Betsy. Dude, I, I love this layout. It's so, like, flowy. Everything just flows. It works really well. You have clearance back there? You do. Fantastic. I do, yeah. I made sure I was out of the foul. It's a big no-no leaving your train where some other train can come hit it. These can unload. These ones up front actually unload into the log. Pond. Yeah, they unloaded the, the three and then they stopped. So it unloaded two, then it unloaded the third one and it didn't pay me for the third one. So I guess that was the test. Like, oh, okay. And then it, and that was that. Yeah, we need to, once we get more track laid, dude, we just need to invite a bunch of people and just have a really busy day. Yeah. Everyone can join moving. one company and we can just, like, we need, to, we need to have the cars, we need to have the engines, we need to have logos for people to use and cars and all yeah. that. But then we could just have a, a day where we just make like, you know, 10 grand in a few, like an hour just from people. That would be fun. See, see how much money we could make, how quickly with. Yeah. A, and like, a, you know, like in 30 server. minutes, how many, how many, like organize all the trains, make sure everyone knows where they're, where they're going, what their destinations are. And yeah, that would be cool. That'd be the way to do it. I want to do a run to the Iron Mine. Like, I, I've done the Mountain Pass, the Edge of the Mountain Pass run. You know, the intended dev route, whatever. It looks cool. It was a cool route. It's a nice route. Um, I like the valley idea. That's, yeah, that's but I fun. really want to do something up the valley and then climb our way up the Iron Mine at the very end. Because that would just be... I feel like we could do some really cool stuff with that. Yeah, and it would, it would give us some fun operational setup, too. Because you could have, you know, a fast engine for the floor of the canyon, right? And then when you're swap. Really, like really running. It's like and a Heisler. Heisler or Shea or something. And then like yeah. do, you know, helper operations and have multiple engines and, you know, watch the, you know, many engines slog it up. There's some great pictures from the early days on the DNRG where they're like slogging up the hill with like three cars and there's five locomotives on the front. And it's like, really? That's how power, like gutless those locomotives were? You needed five for three cars? So... Yeah, it would really capture that early narrow gauge spirit of uh, trying to do it the wrong way. Yeah, just have a heister <laughs> that just parks in, a, in an engine shed at the bottom, and you hook it up to the front of the train, drag the whole train up with it, and then just unhook it and go back down. And that's the helper station. That's the way to do it. The, 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 we could do some cool stuff. I'm just picturing that big steel helix bridge, you know? and <laughs> Just wrapping. Yeah, yeah I fun. mean, obviously, we'll, we'll see how it ends up, but I feel like that would be a cool route to set up for sure and then the I'm smelter route i definitely want to go down like the very edge of the mountain and not just in the middle like i used to like i definitely want to go down the edge yeah, hug, hug that, that left side you know yeah it's definitely one that you can like spiral down to i've done it at a bunch of different grade percentages it's a long run at one percent but you can do it we could i mean it, if, if we did it at one percent and made it a really like gradual turns it could be a fast line it could be yeah once Which might be good, might be good early game, right? But once you get the bigger engines that are more powerful, you want to spend a little bit less time winding well, around. Well, not necessarily and, and because up, once know? once the speed limits go away, you know, the shallow the shallow grade might be good when you've got like like all these big wide curves that we've got here and this bypass lane and stuff. These are all going to be super nice for when we have no speed limits. Like, you imagine you're just sitting here unloading your logs and a cordwood train comes flying through at just 30 miles an hour. Just flying through at 30 miles an hour, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bud, like, have a good one, you know? There's your yeah. cordwood. 
<laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's going to be pretty cool when they don't have speed limits anymore, you know? So it's like, that's going to be... Uh... That's going to be the dream. Yeah, Something... I've been waiting for... Because that, that's what brings the danger. Like, the, the yeah. whole... Like, the whole fun about early day railroading and everything was... Yeah, they had, like, speed limits that they came up with and whatever, but it was really up to the engineer. Uh, and there's plenty of great stories of engineers, like, pushing to make time and you know, wrecking the train or making it somehow in some ungodly fast time between locations. And that that's what's really going to send this game to the next level is when it's like, okay, well, we've built the railroad. It's pretty smooth, but just how fast can we push it? How far does the envelope I get still pushed think before this we game would it? be cool if industries had random contracts that popped up. Yeah. Like, we yeah. want a special delivery of X within this time, you know? And yeah, do it fast, get paid extra. Yeah, exactly. If you do it within a certain time window, you get paid extra, and like you have to accept it, right? And blah blah. blah. But you have to accept them like at the freight depot or something. So like, there's a, you know, there's that kind of forces you to be at one location. I mean, you guess you could already have the train potentially loaded, which would save you a ton of time. But you know, that would also mm. give you an incentive to have loaded cars at every industry, good to go. Yeah, do some switching out, loading cars, and then, run up. You, you know, load your switching. cars. You know, get everything done. Are you full? I'm full, bro. I'm we didn't even. There's three extra. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I don't know what. Do you want to just park that train there, push back with me, load up these logs, and then we'll come back and, and meet up at the freight depot. Uh, you won't want me to come load with you? Yeah, we could do that. You can't. Well, just to keep up the riveting conversation, unless you. Oh, leave. naturally. Oh, let me to... park Betsy. <laughs> She's getting shoved around by these beams, man. We're just gonna leave her, leave her on the line, you know. We'll just, we'll just push back, and everything will be wonderful. All right, Betsy's parked. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tend the fire real quick before we. Uh, before True, that's probably a good go. point. Just, just so that uh, she's ready for when we come back. But yeah, definitely. Uh, don't leave me, gun. Oh, we're don't crawling, dude. Me. This thing, this thing is not picking up speed just anytime. Just putting. <laughs> It looks like it's completely on load on land. Oh, now the logs are spawning. Yeah, in. no, there's three back cars. It just seemed kind of silly to to leave the three back cars only unload them. You know, might as well just push yeah, back yeah. and shove back, load it all, and have it ready to unload. Yeah. Or, or take it to the freight depot or, or whatever. Uh, take, it's it's fancy. take it to the freight depot. Let's maximize the cash. You know. Make make that cash. Yeah. I got a thousand bucks, so we can we can buy some more cars already. So That's good. We'll have to see what uh, people want to see if they want to see corridor, if they want to see iron ore because cordwood cars are a lot cheaper which is nice and i think cordwood cars are nice because you get um eight commodities per car so you yeah, get a little a huge, bit more density it's a lot of selling power yeah so cordwood's decent like revenue coming in but so is uh you know you get 10 with a hopper and then iron ore right so like that's a good money too but yeah but a hopper, two industries for that to work if it's a hopper we have to deliver to the iron mine first yeah, so it's gonna be a minute before we can use the hoppers, but you know, yeah. we just gotta see what we what we can connect to and what we can do. Oh my god, dude, we are chugging. Poor Montezuma being like, what what is three cars on this half percent? Grade? If we go if we go up to the iron mine, we might need uh, we might need some. Uh, well, to, no matter what, we kind of have to go to the smelter first if we're gonna do the valley for the iron mine. That's true, the valley Because you gotta go down to the smelter and that's your starting point and then you gotta stay like at that valley level, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, the uh, the Montezuma might struggle if we have a steep grade at the iron mine. Definitely. Yeah, definitely on the weaker side. We gotta get to, gotta get the Glenbrook going or the uh, the 060, the class 48 sometime soon. Those would, uh, those would help us out significantly. How expensive is a class 48, do you know? It's 3,500 bucks. Okay, so that's not actually that bad. It's not. And that's straight stacks. It's only got one headlight. It's only got one paint. But the only seems. product we can deliver to the smelter is cordwood, really. Yeah, for now, until we go get iron. Until we go get iron. And then the iron mine, we can deliver planks and beams, so. Could do all that in one, which is nice. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we could always cool. honestly hook up the border to the front of the Montezuma, and that might... And have the, the world's saddest doubleheader. Yep. The world's saddest... It might be able to pull eight cars up a, up maybe a two or three percent. <laughs> we'll have to do the math. 
baby. It depends on how many lumber cars are there, because the lumber cars are the heavy ones. I think, well, you need a ratio of, like, one to two, right? So I think you need, like, uh, like, we need three lumber cars and six bean cars, and that's, unless they change, although they might have changed the product ratios. I I, think so I remember they changed it, because I remember people giving me relentless amounts of crap because I did it wrong. So, uh, <laughs> oh boy. we'll just have to see. It seems like the sketchiest like reverse pushback whatever i don't know what they're it's called it's fine shove yeah uh i should be on the other end technically it's actually very illegal for you to just shove back with no one protecting the shove you how have do you to have but, someone okay, riding back the in the day car. they didn't have like walkie talkies or anything how do you actually like communicate if you're at the very back of a long train there's no way that the engineer would hear you you'd be given hand signals with your arms you would what about when we're around corners like this uh, then you don't see. <laughs> yeah, so you just thing. go for it. You just go, ah, screw it. So, like, it would be, we're coming up to the logging camp, and we know that we're coming up to it. And I would have told you, you know, previously with hand signals saying, like, okay, you're good to continue for 10 more cars. Right. And so you know as the engineer, okay, I, I, I'm good for 10. If he doesn't give me another count by the time I get to 5, I have to stop. And so then I'd give you another count, you know, okay, I give you another 10. Okay, you're happy, you can go another 10, that's great. Or maybe, you know, we get to close to five cars and I give you six. Okay, well then, you know, you're good for three more. And, you know, that way you, you can always have line of sight and appropriate speed for how far you're gonna be going when you're shoving like that. I'm assuming there weren't very many long distance shoves. No, there. you really tried not to do that. You'd try to have the engine on the right end. Um, but, you know, sometimes that they, they did have to happen like that, and in some operational situations, you had to do it, but you'd always have folks ready to protect and, and relay and if that ever did come up, so. And hear me out, a guy riding on a horse next to the train. <laughs> I mean, you could do that. It wouldn't be necessarily the best way to do I'm it. I'm still saying, could. Railroads Online needs some PvP, okay? We need some PvP... You need people on horses try to rob your train commodities while you're delivering Royal Gorge them. DLC uh, when... Yeah, exactly. There was there was actually a literal conflict between the Denver and Rio Grande and the Santa Fe back in the late 1800s, I think it was. They were trying to see who was going to get to build the railroad through the Royal Gorge, who, who was going to get the alignment. And they literally showed up with guns and started shooting at each other to try and, like, see who owned the railroad. And it went to the courts and everything, and... And it ultimately ended up with the uh, the DNRG getting to build it, and uh, it became the now famous Tennessee Pass line. And uh, the start of it is actually a tourist train. You can you can ride through the Royal Gorge. It's got a really crazy uh, cantilevered bridge in it uh, that the train runs on, and part of it because it's a, such a narrow canyon, it's really scenic. So America still solves exists. a lot of problems with guns. I've noticed. Well, you know, they show it, up, it's... they shoot first, and they're like, maybe we should talk about it. Maybe we should talk about it. Well, you know, it's it's fine. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. America. Mm -hmm. let's, not, let's not go to the courts first. Let's shoot each other first, then go to the courts. 1800s America was a, an interesting place. A savage place, place apparently. The, the amount of hard liquor and the amount of guns that were present uh, in the Wild West. Per capita. Uh, there's, a reason, there's a reason it was the Wild West. There's actually a, a, a story from my alma mater at the college I went to, the Colorado School of Mines, which was, uh, you know, big into mining engineering when it started, and it later became for engineering in general. Um, and there was some rivalry that they had with, I think, the the, the uh, university in Denver. And th they did something like they stole something or defaced the, the big letter M that was on the hill. And so the School of Mines engineers showed up with dynamite and blew up the school. They literally blew up the office. Like, okay, that, that's, active, I had a active story domestic about, terrorism in the 1800s. Like, I had a story about the university I went to and its main rivalry, but that's not it's not nearly as cool as blowing up another school. No, no one uh, blew up the, uh, the no rival one blew, school. No, I'm in Canada, so we're much less excited. We had uh, the school I went to uh, is, in, is in Ontario, and but its main rivalry is the University of Toronto. Um, okay. Because I, I live near Toronto, and... So the, I don't remember what it was. The University of Toronto stole something, whatever. It was, you know, it started somehow, right? And apparently what happened is the next, the next over the weekend, um, a bunch of the engineers from my school went to the University of Toronto and they changed all the locks on all the doors. Oh, wow. All the buildings. 
So over the course of a weekend, they just went, you know, used all their tools and whatever, just changed all the locks, and everyone showed up on, like, you know, the Monday or whatever, and... and nobody could get in. Nobody could get in <laughs> anything. And that, that was, like, the big prank. But this was, like, again, back in, like, I don't know, like, 1950-something, when you... That, that's, that's more there of were a no consequences prank blowing up a school. So, you know. Let's, uh, get on out of let's here. Let's get rolling here. Break off. Reverser full, regulator full, two, two, two. two it, it's two, it's not three. Okay, well, you know what? Oh, we, we never, we never blow out this. I kind of wish they had, like, I know the cylinder cocks you could open up, which is kind of cool, blow up the steam. I kind of wish they had, like, I mean, maybe at some point they will, like, train maintenance. And, right. uh, you know, if you Make don't do the proper purge some, cycles yeah. and stuff, then it wears down faster. Yeah, yeah. It's Cylinder cocks are extremely important, and they're just a special effect right now. It'd be nice if they actually had their purpose. Because, uh, yeah, over time, you know, steam gets cold when it's not in the boiler. So if you're sitting with steam, sitting around in the steam chest, it condenses, becomes water. And uh, water is incompressible, and the steam engine tries to compress things, and uh, it's a great way to blow heads off or break rings and stuff. So uh, we need some fuel, sir. Do we? Oh, okay. Well, excuse, Fire, excuse me. Fireman, just put as the I, wood as I, in between my as legs. As I climb between your legs, other yeah. John Railroad in. Yeah, don't worry about it. This is just where I stand all the time. This is just we're just I'm three pointering uh, wood between your legs. That did not add legs. to the fuel count, sir. It did not. No, oh, you oh. clearly missed. That. <laughs> oh, okay, it's fine. I'm just throwing wood around. How, is the the interactive widget? There it is. Oh, there you go. Yes, that worked. Yep. That got added. it. Nailed it All that right, time, perfect. boys. We're good. We got fuel. We can close the hatch. This, uh, this uh, fire is very hot. It's burning my face. Dude, it's door. like it's like right on my ankles. Like I'm pretty sure. It's just just right there. It's fine. We're just going for a nice cruise. We're not. You know, we're on a half percent down. I don't want to. You know, go too fast. Run out of right you know the the funny thing and and hopefully someday this will be made accurate but n none of the dnrg's engines ever burned wood the montezuma is a coal burner it burned coal from the very beginning from 1871 well so, you still needed wood to start right you needed wood to fire up yeah okay i feel uh, like that, the reason that burner, they, they they you know i feel like the reason that you started with wood in this is because it's a little easier to give players the fuel source like the sawmill yeah, whatever that rather little, than needing to go to yeah right the fuel depot station but it would be cool if you could convert to coal like run them on coal or buy engines and say like i wanted to burn coal rather than wood so like late game yeah. you buy coal engines like coal variants and then i'd like to see that and then you know of course like see that the actual efficiencies and the improvements that that gets you because i mean right. a wood burner when you're actually firing a wood burner you are throwing wood in constantly good luck like you your job is grab five sticks of wood throw the wood in go get five more sticks throw the i mean just continuously when you're running tonnage because right. i mean the wood like vaporizes in the firebox it's burning so hot with the oxygen that's rushing through Whereas coal, you know, even when you're running tonnage, you can wait a minute or a minute and a half before you add a bunch more coal. But wood, it's like the constant battle you're tossing it in. I there. mean, to be fair, we run on like one log an hour, really. It's like yeah, it's um, it's a uh, it's a little bit inaccurate in that way. <laughs> the uh, fill on this line is interesting. It is, uh, you know, it's, um, it's a bit. Of I would have made fill. it a lot shallower, but then I was like, you know what, like a lot, um, like have it go down to the ground and then have a steeper run up to the logging camp. But we have little itty bitty baby engines to start with here. So. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't mind this though, to be honest. I know it's on the, the, worst the first playthrough fill. I did, I had like some super crazy low fill all the time and like really tried to follow the turn, the contours of the maps and stuff, but. It can be challenging to do that. Although yeah. that's certainly like that would have been the cheapest thing for the rail railroad to really do. So, yeah, less fill. But like, look at look at these curves, man. We got industrial rail. It's so smooth now. We would have been able to afford fill. You know what I mean? If we're laying track right. like this, we get we can afford fill. This is some high dollar track. This exactly. Is not lowest bidder track for sure. Yeah, look at these parallel lines. You know, you 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 can tell how Heist did not lay this. <laughs> All right. Well, Crack I guess, Railroad uh, actually I'll, I'll, has a huge budget. That's the thing. Right. I'll bid you adieu right here, and uh, I'll hop on Betsy, and I'll meet you at the freight depot. Yeah, I'm breaking. I'm going to break hard. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try and you should 
I, I don't know if you can go first. Okay, apparently... Oh, I don't think I can go first. I don't no, think I'm stopping. not going to be able to break in time, yeah. so we're going yeah, those, for those it. Yeah, those logs are showing you what's up, so yeah. I'm on Betsy now. All right, perfect. And I'm going to see... I, I should probably open the reg now just because how heavy these beams are. Yeah, just don't hit that switch when my thing is still on it. It's going to be close. It's, it's all right. These are heavier than heck. All right, we're good. We're good. Um, I think I passed it. You're clear now, and I threw the switch over. Yo, That's 10 minutes, bro. 10 minutes. You got to give me oh, 10 minutes. What are you? kind of like 10 minutes. What are you doing? <laughs> we got places to be. We got money to make, Con. Come on. Yeah, dude. We're, uh, safety? We're... What do you mean, safety? These I don't, are pixels. I don't think this bridge is rated for two trains. Two wait. trains on it at once? Probably not. It's fine. Your whistle sounds so much cooler than mine. Yeah, the uh, the Montezuma's whistle is very high pitched for what it's it like is. It's like a National Geographic documentary. Look as the trains whistle to each other as a form of communication. <laughs> 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 the one train issues a warning call for other trains to stay out of its territory. <laughs> Come on. Oh, we need some chime whistles. Give me give me more chimes. Give me heist six chime or give me death. <laughs> Look, the Montezuma is spooked. It tries spooked. to run off. <laughs> it's trying to, he's being stalked by the very small Betsy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> its vision is based on movement, though. So, like, you know. Well, Betsy doesn't have a headlight, so I don't know if Betsy can see anything. Oh, Betsy that's true. Yeah, blind. just gotta wait till nighttime, and then I'll and then I'll get away. Right. We'll shoot with these oil headlights that uh, that Montezuma would have. Good luck seeing anything, anyways. Yeah. The right. oil headlights were so bad back in the day; they really did not show you anything that you needed to see. They were more for being seen than seeing things. All right, we're uh, going in the backwards way because this loop naturally just keeps flipping itself. Yep. You're uh, <laughs> on my end. Your engine is rendered, but your tender isn't. That's and then the load on the first car isn't rendered, so it, it's just making a real special thing. And I'm almost, I'm almost. Dude, how are you into catching you. up? I don't understand. I, I don't get rank. it either. I'm full rank, full on, speed. A, 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 Betsy's faster than the Zuma. Barely. I'm, I'm now shoving. You're shoving. I'm now shoving. Yeah, on I'm you. actually at full speed. Like I get, there's nothing else I can do. <laughs> That's so <laughs> we weird. We made you a Betsy a, sandwich. You have a better speed limit. That's interesting. Apparently doesn't make any sense. Betsy's drivers are itty bitty. Well, I'm sure like, you know, obviously I'm not at the Montezuma's full speed in terms of speed limit. Ten minutes between trains. We've just become one train. Yeah, I know. It's I'm just one train. train. No one can complain if you're one train. Yeah, exactly. The new splines, man, you can make some really smooth curves, and that's why I feel like smooth curves and fill where it's appropriate. We got an expensive railroad going, you know? We're in the expensive right. three-foot era. Well, back in this day, like in the early days of the three foot gauge, I mean, the early DNRG stuff was really adornished and really pretty because they had a bunch of money because it was like gold rush time. Gold right. rush and silver was booming. And, you know, the railroads had a lot of money in that day and they were actually had like really nice equipment and took good care of it. It's only the uh, the memories of the narrow gauge that was still clinging on by some little thread in the 1950s and 1960s that we think of narrow gauge as the little podunk never had any money. That was certainly the case at the end of the days, but back in the early 1800s, mid 1800s, and late 1800s of this era, you know, that was, uh, they actually had a lot of money and they were really cool. All right, two more cars to go, and then we'll see how much money we've got and, and think about what we're gonna do next time. We're all unloaded. I have $2,072. That's pretty good. So a little over two Gs. So we can definitely get, you know, we could get a fair amount of cordwood cars. We could get two hoppers. So like, we got options. But we'd but still have to deliver stuff to the iron mine first before. So we yeah. could probably get three hoppers by the time we actually deliver all the stuff. Yeah, so you guys got to let us know down in the comments below what you think we should do. Whether we should go to the iron mine first or if we should go to the smelter first. You know, run cordwood or do we supply the iron mine first? And we'll kind of figure it out from there, I think. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we got to lay track first no matter what. But I, yep. I, I agree. <laughs> Well, this Although, is a good moneymaker, and it was a fun conversation. And 
always good to see a couple trains out on the railroad. Always yeah, dude, I'm happy. I'm so excited like with how smooth these splines are and stuff. I can't wait to have just like four, five, six, seven, ten trains all running simultaneously. I, it's gonna be track. cool, man. But yeah, so let us know cool. what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, like, subscribe, check out Heise's channel, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Yep. Bye. Bye.